and welcome to episode 49 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my podcast all about my yarny adventures here in Surprise, Arizona, where I currently live with my husband and our two sons. Episode 49. That seems insane. We are heading up on almost two years of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast here in September and episode 49 just seems bananas. I cannot believe that next episode will be episode 50. We're gonna have to do a special little giveaway for episode 50, I think. That seems like quite a milestone. So today we have quite a lot to talk about. It's been three weeks since the last episode. I apologize, I try to do it every two weeks. It's just summer, the kids are home, life's been crazy. We'll talk more about that later in chatter. But yes, it's been three weeks, so we've got a lot to talk about today. I hope that you guys are ready. Settle in with your beverage of choice and your knitting, and let's get started. I've just got iced coffee today, of course, because that's just life right now in Arizona. Yesterday it was I don't even know what it actually got up to. I know when I was out running errands around one o'clock, I try to find the shadiest spot in the parking lot. I'm that person. Like I will hunt down the shade of a tree or anything and I will park and then I will walk. I'm just that person. I would rather walk a little bit. I'm like, oh, a little bit of exercise. than get back in a completely miserable, miserable car that's been sitting in the sun and the leather seats burn your legs. Like. I'm just that person. <laughs> so, and plus, we had someone ding the door of our van not that long ago, and of course they didn't leave a note or anything, and it was a sizable ding. So I like parking away from people as well. So anyways, yesterday we were at the store and I found some shade. I parked on, you know, as much shade as I can get under a tree. When we got back in the van to leave, it was 117 is what the van was registering it as. On the way home, or maybe like two miles from the store, if that, on the way home, it got up to 119 before we got home. It's hot. So iced coffee. And yesterday, of course, I think it was like the hottest day of the year. Eric might have said it was a record yesterday or the day before. Um, I forgot to put my iced coffee in the fridge on Monday. So I've shared on Instagram, um, there's a highlighted story how I make my iced coffee. I let it sit and cool to room temp, just a regular pot of coffee, and then put it in the fridge and let it sit overnight so it's ready for the next morning. So yesterday morning I got up and I go in the kitchen and I'm ready to have my breakfast to make my coffee. There's my coffee sitting on the counter. I never put it in the fridge. I just left it sitting on the counter. <laughs> Don't know what happened. It was just one of those days, a crazy day, Monday, so yeah. I didn't get my iced coffee put in the fridge, so I had to suffer through and try to drink hot coffee yesterday. And I don't know how some people do it out here. I cannot, I do not want any kind of a hot drink right now. So yeah, today, yesterday I made sure that my coffee went in the fridge, double checked last night before I went to bed that I put it in there. So I'm ready to go this morning with my iced coffee. And this might be my second cup, but who's counting? Okay. so. I should probably tell you guys where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady. And we do have a group for the podcast on Ravelry. If you head over and search in the groups tab for crazy sock lady podcast, it's going to pop right up there. If you don't feel like searching for anything, just look down below here in the down bar and you're going to find links to everywhere that you can find me as well as show notes will be listed below. I found that's really the easiest way for me pop them down below. And I love when I can click that down bar on YouTube and the show notes are down below when I'm watching a podcast. So I think this is just working out great. I hope that you guys are liking it. I'm also putting them in the Ravelry group, but I do go through every now and then and clean up the Ravelry group and archive things. So yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys are liking having them down below here on YouTube. So we've got a little bit of administrative Ravelry group information right off the bat here. So first up, we have a swap with swap open in the group. We just have one that's open right now. And this is with Sarah Craft. We have 18 spots available still in this one. So we have quite a few spots still available. The money is due by August 15th. So you can go sign up at any time. It has information in there how to pay. You just have to be paid up by August 15th. The gist of this, I have one here to show you somewhere. There it is. Um, you get 10 
40 yard minis from the dyer. This is the last one that I received and this is with Owl About Yarn. So they come in a bag like this, 10 40 yard minis, has the dyer's name, the colorway names are listed, and the prices range from 35 to $45. So these would make, you know, if you are gearing up to do some mini swaps with friends for the holidays or something, this would be a great little thing you can get and have some minis or if you just want them for your own scrappy projects, that is amazing as well. So if you want to get signed up for that, we just have the one that's open right now. Lisa of Happy Scrappy Life has been hosting those, but she is taking a step back and then we have someone else coming in and taking over the swapless swaps. So as more information becomes available for what ones are coming up, I will of course pass all of that along via the podcast and it'll be in Ravelry group as well. Knit alongs, we have a few going on right now. So we of course have our two year long knit alongs. The first being the Sock Crazy Cow for 2018. This is for any socks that you make this year other than baby socks, those do not count. Any others, head over and get those entered and we do drawings every three months. Then we also have the Crazy Sock Lady Designs Make Along and this is for any of my designs that you knit or crochet. If you choose to crochet yourself a cup of love cozy, that does count. Um, so yes, any of my designs, we do drawings every three months as well for that one. Then we also have the Get That Knit Done Cal, and I am co-hosting this with Karen and Susan from the Full of Knit podcast. You can enter into both of our Ravelry groups for this one, so make sure that you're a member of both groups. Of course, check out their podcast because I love those ladies. And then this is just to get any of your whips done. Any whips that you have that have kind of been languishing for a while and you wanna clear off those needles and get ready for fall and winter knitting, now is the time to do it with this knit along. And that one enter or enters, that one ends August 31st. Then the last one, the newest one that has started is the Decked Out for Rhinebeck Cal. And I am co-hosting this with Christy and Tristan from Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. And this is kind of getting everybody ready for Rhinebeck. This one's gonna run until October 31st. So it actually runs through the month of Rhinebeck, which is the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. I feel like I should mention that because I did have somebody ask. So Rhinebeck is actually the town in New York, Rhinebeck, New York, where the New York Sheep and Wool Festival is held. Um, so that's when people reference Rhinebeck, they're talking about the New York Sheep and Wool Festival and all of the events that surround that. Um, I feel like it's just kind of taken on that name, but it is actually the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. So yes, this is getting everybody ready for Rhinebeck, for all of the fun and exciting things that are gonna happen. Of course, we wanna have all of our hand knit items or crocheted even as well um, to wear. So this, you do not have to be going to Rhinebeck to participate in this. So if you're not going, what would you make and wear? Make that and you can still enter it in the knit along and participate and you can be there with us in spirit. So like I said, this one ends October 31st. Now you do get extra entries if you use any of my patterns, Christy's patterns, Tristan's patterns, or Christy or Tristan's yarns, and they are um, Dragon Horde yarns and Yarn Cafe Creations. So if you use any of those, you get an extra entry, just post your object twice. I think that's it. <laughs> And I did wanna make sure to mention the patterns for the Decked Out for Rhinebeck collaboration that the three of us are doing. So Tristan's is already out. She did the Hyde Park pattern. You can find that on Ravelry now. And I will of course put a link down below in the down bar. And then Christy is doing the Rhinebeck is my favorite season shawl, which is absolutely gorgeous. It is like a sampler shawl. Each section is different. So it's perfect if you're a beginner knitter and want to learn some new stitches, or even if you're an experienced knitter and just want something that will be a little bit mindless, but at the same time, interesting and change every section um, and kind of keep you really interested in the design. So that will come out August 1st. And then I'm gonna talk a bit in design talk about the two patterns that I will be releasing for this collaboration that will be coming out August 1st as well. And I think that is it for knit alongs. <laughs> so now we have a couple of prizes and giveaways to talk about. So last episode, we talked about the pattern that Jen Shaleen donated, and that was the Springtime Melodies Shawl. And I went ahead and drew a winner for that this morning. And the winner is a post number 14, and that is Rose. And I'll put your Ravelry name right down here. 
And that is Rose from Minnesota. So congratulations, Rose. I will get your information over to Jen so that she can gift you that pattern. And then we also have a new pattern that we're going to give away. I'm gonna open a thread in Ravelry so you can head over there. This is for the Leather and Lace Socks by Amanda Rate, which is Skyly Knits. And I'll pop a picture right up here. So if you just wanna head over, there will be a prompt in the Ravelry group for the thread. So you can head over and enter for that and we will do a winner on the next episode. And now we have the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm gonna reach down here and grab it. I have put together, I think it's a pretty awesome package for you guys for this. As a huge thank you for watching the podcast, subscribing, sticking with me through all of the craziness. I've got quite a few little goodies in here for you guys. So we're gonna run through what is in this package here. And a lot of these are individually packaged how they came to me from the maker. And I will leave a lot of them like that so that everything just stays so nice and neat. So first up from Lindsay of Simply Serving, we have a DPN cozy and then she's also put a progress keeper in here. I don't think you can see it. And like I said, I'm gonna leave all of this packaged up nice and neat. Um, but there is a progress keeper in here that is a waffle with bacon on the top. Pretty awesome. Next up, we have a skein of yarn from Monica of Yarn Slinger Mistress. Gorgeous skein of yarn. And I'm going to include a pair of these cute little scissors, which I love, by the way. I absolutely love them. Um, I kept a pair for myself, and then I'm gonna pop this in the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. And these are, as you can see, just from Knit Picks. A Notions pouch from Erica of the Scrappy Thread. And Erica actually sent me three of these, so you guys are gonna be seeing these in a couple giveaways coming up as well. Uh, but I adore this fabric right here. I think that is so pretty. So yes, and it's all packaged up with a sweet little note from Erica. And then we also have a bag, and I will open this so that you guys can see how big it is, from Georgianne of Stitching Plaza. Look how pretty that is. So Georgianne messaged me and said that she would like to send a bag for the 5,000 subscriber giveaway and that she wanted to do it themed kind of with my move. So I thought that was a lot of fun and this is perfect. Um, for moving out to the Southwest. And the inside is this gorgeous gold collar, nice boxed bottom, drawstring, so cute. So that I believe is everything for our 5,000 subscriber giveaway. So for this, I'm going to host it here on YouTube. This will be the first time I've ever done a giveaway actually on YouTube. I usually do everything in the Ravelry group, but I know some people don't use Ravelry or don't like to do stuff in the groups. So since this is a thank you to all of the subscribers, I'm gonna do it here on YouTube. Couple of things, I've heard that you should not post a giveaway in the comments. So try not to say giveaway in your comment below. Um, I think people can search for that or something and then you might have people that aren't really subscribed or interested. They're just looking to win things. That's what I've heard. So we're just gonna go with that. So try not to say giveaway down below, but all you have to do is comment down below and you have to be subscribed to the podcast. So if you're not subscribed yet, hit subscribe, comment below. Next episode, I will draw a winner from the comments on this episode. And I want to say before I forget, um, Georgianne of Stitching Plaza gave us a coupon code for the podcast. So I'll make sure to link the shop down below, of course, and I will post the coupon code there. And the code is for 15% off crazy sock. So you can head over to Georgianne's shop and do a little looking around at her bags. And if you find one you like, you can get 15% off by using the code crazy sock. So thank you so much to everybody who donated to this amazing 5,000 subscriber giveaway. I am so excited to be able to give back to you guys like this. Um, and as always, if anyone wants to donate to the podcast, just send me a message. I love getting to showcase makers and support all of you makers and be able to give back to my amazing viewers. So thank you. And I think since next episode is episode 50, we will do another little giveaway package via YouTube next episode to celebrate that because I think that's super fun. And 
I'm excited to give some stuff away to you guys. <laughs> All right, so now we are going to head into some design talk. I have a couple designs to talk to you guys about and show you guys. Um, let's see here. Did I even bring, I didn't. I didn't even bring one of them in here. I'm gonna go grab that really quick and then we will talk about design talk. So first up in design talk, I showed this design last time, but it was not fully completed or released. So I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that it is available now. And this is the follow your path socks. So these socks I did with legacy fiber arts yarn, and it is in their foxtails colorway. And it does have an eye of partridge heel flap. The pattern is written for cuff down, but you can of course do a toe up if that is what you prefer. So I'm really excited about this pattern. It is kind of a play on a three by one rib with some twists and some texture that just give it a little bit more, a little bit more detail, but you still get that nice pull of a three by one rib. So there's a little bit of a close up. So this is out on Ravelry now. Link will of course be down below if you're interested in getting this pattern. And these sock blockers are from Burning Impressions if anyone is interested. They're super fun. They were a gift from one of my knitting ladies in North Carolina. Okay, so that is the first design. Now the second design, second and third actually are not released yet. These are my contribution to the collaboration for the Decked Out for Rhinebeck um, with Christy and Tristan. Where are they? There's one. Everything's a mess around here. You guys should see this. Um, I think it's like that anytime anybody podcasts, but I've drug everything in. I'm in um, my bedroom right now, the master bedroom. I think this is the best place right now while the kids are still home. I can shut the door. I'm away from the TVs and the playing and all of that type of stuff. Um, so I've had to drag everything upstairs and in from the yarn loft. So it's a little bit crazy in here right now. <laughs> but okay, the first one that we're gonna talk about for the Decked Out for Ryan Beck is the pair of fingerless mitts that I designed. I'm going to try them on here so that you can see what they look like. And for this, I used Christie's yarn, Yarn Cafe Creations. And this is in her Foxy colorway. And these are a fingering weight pair of fingerless mitts. Can you get a little blown out? There we go. So it is a nice cabled design up the front of the mitt. Then it's just plain stockinette on this side. So the name that I decided to go with for these mitts is On The Hill Mitts. So if you've uh, heard about Rhinebeck or been or watched any vlogs about Rhinebeck, I'm sure you've heard about the podcaster meetup that takes place on the hill at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And to me last year, that was one of the most amazing parts of the festival. The hill itself is absolutely gorgeous. You've got some gorgeous trees and just the scenery is amazing. And then you go there and you, get to meet and chat with so many amazing people. It was just so much fun. And not even that, but after, I'm sure it was going on before. I don't think we were around before the podcast room meetup in that area. But afterwards, there were just groups of people sitting and knitting and chatting. Such an amazing little area of the festival. Um, kind of away from the hustle and bustle of the shopping and all of that just this gorgeous hill with these amazingly beautiful trees. So that is kind of what inspired these mitts and the name behind them. So there's another little look at the cable design. And like I said, these are fingering weight, fingerless mitts. And I used her Biscotti fingering base, which I don't have the tag with me, but I believe it's an 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. It's amazing, this collar is amazing. It totally screams fall. Yeah. I'm gonna take these to Rhinebeck and hope that maybe it's cool enough to wear them. <laughs> I don't know. 
we'll see. But that's the first design. Um, and both of these designs will be out August 1st. That is the plan. Both of the designs that I'm um, getting ready to release for this collaboration. Okay, the next design for this collaboration is the On the Hill socks. Are you sensing a theme here? So last year, if you're new to the podcast um, or my designs, I did the Rhinebeck is Calling socks to kind of prepare and get ready for Rhinebeck. That was one of the designs that I released and was inspired to do. And then later on after Rhinebeck, I came out with the Rhinebeck is Calling fingerless mitts. So I kind of played on that same thing last year and did, I started out with the socks and then I turned them into mitts. Just happens that the mitts got done before the socks, <laughs> but let's take a look at the socks. So I've got these in a bag from Wendy of By the Bay Yarn Co. And I've put some of my pins on here. I've got my Sandy by the Lakeside, Simply Serving. This one is from Paige of Frame and Fiber, Legacy Fiber Arts, Gnome Knitter. And then I have this from my friend Natalie. It is a British Columbia pin. And then I also found an Arizona pin, which I thought was fun. So I put that on there as well. But for the socks, oh, I should have put these on a blocker. Let's grab a blocker to put these on. So I'm using a Tristan's yarn for this and I'm so excited. Um, for one, I'm so excited to be collaborating with these two amazing ladies. And I feel so honored to be using their yarns for both of these designs. So for this one, I'm using a Tristan's yarn and she is Dragon Horde yarn. And I'm using the Woodland Nymph colorway. So here is sock number one. And I'll show you on sock number two, the front of the sock, so you can see the cable design better. But here is the design. It does have an eye of partridge heel flap and gusset. And I love this colorway. Look at all of these speckles, you guys. So much fun variation. So the second sock is in progress. Got it in a DPN cozy from Lindsay of Simply Serving. And here is the front of the sock. I'm trying to think what the best way to show you guys. So you can see it's the same pattern that was on the mitts, um, just on a sock. There we go. This might work. This cable design goes all the way down the front and then the back of the stock is just in plain stockinette to give you a little bit of a break from that pattern. But saying that, don't think that it is hard. It is not hard at all. I don't want anyone to be intimidated by these cables. I want you to give it a try. If you're new to cables and you've been wanting to try them, give them a try. They're so much fun and so addicting. So that's sock number two. I'm just working on finishing this up. Uh, both of these patterns are out to testers right now and it's going well and I'm just getting ready to release them August 1st. So I've got to finish this and get some pictures. To me, that's probably the hardest part of this whole, the whole process with designing is feeling like I've gotten good enough photos. I really struggle with that. I'm not a photographer. I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I feel like that's been the hardest part for me is trying to get good photos. Austin helps a lot when it's something that I can't take a picture of myself. Um, and he does a great job too. So it's just the hardest part for me. I can knit the thing up. I can write the pattern out. I have so much fun doing that. But when it comes time to take pictures, I kind of feel a little panicky because you see so many amazing photos that designers use and I don't know I have a little bit of insecurity with it feeling like my photos are not up to par so that's something I would kind of like to improve on as I do more pattern releases and I always forget to mention needles <laughs> with the socks I had those on knitters pride zings us1 2.25 millimeter 64 stitches um, the fingerless mitts actually use US1 2.25 millimeter as well. And that pattern will be written for magic loop. Um, the mitts will. All right, so that's it for design talk. Now let's talk about some finished objects. Do you guys see a big one right back here? <laughs> so this is my Shoe Suey Shrug by Suzanne Summer. 
and it's done. I don't think it, it's like the best um, design to have hanging on a mannequin. I will say that. It just does not do it justice <laughs> to have it hanging on the mannequin. So I'm going to take it off and I'm going to put it on um, quickly to show you guys uh, what it looks like on. All right, so here it is. This is my Shoe Suey Shrug. Again, the pattern is by Suzanne Summer. Stand up there so you can see. I am so pleased with how it came out. I love these little like half sleeves. They're super fun. I was not, before I blocked it, it was a little bit shorter than I had hoped, but blocking it, as we know, you know that makes things grow so that definitely worked out in my favor and I love it so much I just know that I'm going to live in this once the weather cools down and this is the inside it is brioche a lot a lot of brioche I had somebody ask if this was like what I would rate this as I would say this is an intermediate pattern if you have never done brioche before, I would not pick this to be your first brioche pattern. I'm gonna sit down so we can talk about it a bit more. Um, I would not choose this as a first brioche pattern. Not that it's hard to understand, the pattern itself is amazing. It is just a bit more of an intricate brioche pattern. I'll take it off and show you some of the bits here that I think make it more of an intermediate. So you have a lot of increases going throughout the pattern in different sections and none of them are hard at all. Um, I would just say have a little bit of brioche experience under your belt because this one has so much going on and you're increasing in so many different sections. You've got so many different parts going. So yeah, I would definitely recommend having a little bit of brioche under your belt before you tackle this, unless you're really adventurous and you just wanna throw caution to the wind and go for it, totally go for it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna live in this. I really want another one and maybe, I don't know, like a, a maroon, kind of like this collar with another collar. I don't know, I love the solid. I know so many people do um i've seen a lot of like the speckled yarns which are gorgeous as well but for me i love the look of two solid or tonal collars in this design because i want everybody to know this is brioche just yeah unless they're not a knitter and then they're not gonna know but whatever <laughs> i want everyone who knows what brioche is to look at that and be like is that I like not to, like that sounds like I'm totally tooting my own horn and all of that but this was felt like such an accomplishment to complete this it really did and I think anyone who completes this pattern has that same sense of accomplishment and you totally should because it is a lot of brioche but it was so much fun and I would knit another one not right this second I've I've thought about casting another one on and then I was like nope just you need to wait you need to take a break because I have a feeling if I cast it on right now I would not get very far and then I would just kind of be done I would need a break so I'm gonna wait and hold off on casting on another one but that is in the future at some point to do another one because I just know I am going to live in that thing it is so comfortable it is just like a hug of a shawl but then you have the sleeves. So I have, I just know, cause I wear shawls around the house a lot over my shoulders. I've talked about that before. Granny K here over the shoulders with the shawl is my favorite way of wearing them. But they do tend to kind of slide off your shoulders when you're doing stuff around the house. So I think with the sleeves of that and just kind of the way it, it lays over the shoulders, it is going to be something that will not be constantly sliding off and all over the place while I'm doing whatever around the house. It just needs to cool down. The other day I just sat in the living room, I had the ceiling fan going, I had the other fan going in the room. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna wear this for a little bit. I didn't wanna take it off, so I didn't. I just sat in front of the fan and wore it. Eventually it has to cool down a little bit and then I will wear it. <laughs> I 
I'm looking forward to Rhinebeck because I don't know that it'll cool down here before Rhinebeck. Um, so yeah, that being said, this is definitely one of my Rhinebeck knits, one of my Rhinebeck sweaters that I will be taking along with me for that trip. This may even be what I wear the day of Rhinebeck. Like, or the day of, like the Saturday, um, the biggest day of the festival, I think. This may be what I wear. This may be my like official Rhinebeck sweater. It just might be. We'll have to see what else I actually get knit between now and then, but this might be my official Rhinebeck sweater. We will see. And for this, I use a US 6 four millimeter needles. And the yarn that I used is by Yarn Cafe Creations. And the gray is smoky gray and the pink is thorn. Love those two colors together. Next finished object is a pair of socks. And these are stripy socks because that seems to be like all the socks I've been knitting lately that are not designs are stripy socks. <laughs> They're just so much fun. So this is Sardar Heart and Soul. That's the yarn that I used. And the colorway is number 53. So for these, I did a US1 2.25 millimeter needle, 64 stitches, and I did a three by one rib. So knit three, purl one rib. And a basic slip stitch heel flap and gusset. I love how these turned out. I just love the shades, the tones of these colors. I love a ribbed sock. They just fit so well. So for the ribbing on this, I did probably 25 rounds, I would say, of two by two knit two purl two ribbing. And then I went into the three by one. So that's the last finished object for this episode. Now we're gonna talk about works in progress. I have four works in progress that I'll show you guys today. The first one is in a bag from Georgianne of Stitching Plaza. This was part of a kit she did last year with Meg of Bad Wolf Girl Studios for the Christmas in July. And this is actually my Christmas in July project for Meg's Knit Along. So this is the Doctor Who ugly Christmas sweater bag and I love it. And in here I have my Christmas in July socks. <laughs> So the yarn that I'm using is Desert Vista Dye Works and it is Zombody's Kissing Santa Claus. There's her tag. And I have sock number one done minus the heel. I've got my markers in there for the heel and obviously I didn't weave in that end. Or yes I did. It's just the sniff probably from where I weaved in the end. So <laughs> there is sock number one. I love this yarn. I love Susan's zombody yarns because they have the solid and then the speckles in between and I think that is so much fun love it so that's sock number one sock number two is on the go and this is my July sock for the desert vista dye works year-long sock knit along and it's close to the end of July you guys I gotta get going so here is sock number two and it's going, I mean, it's, it's into the leg, so I'll get there. It's just plain vanilla. That's what I've been doing for all of the Desert Vista Dye Works socks. They're my vanilla knitting, mindless sit down or car knitting. And for these, I didn't go matchy matchy. When I finished this one, I was at the speckled and then the green. And I didn't want to keep winding to get to a red, so I just wound off the speckle and then started with the green, so. And I like when you don't necessarily do matchy-matchy because I think when you look at these, you see more red when you look at this one because that's what it started with. But when I look at this one, I see more green. So I just think that's fun. Kind of throws your focus off on what color you see from each sock what pops the most. So I've got to get sock number two really moving along and then get the heels put in if I'm gonna have them done and entered into the Desert Vista Dye Works Knit Along by January 31st at midnight. That's the cutoff. But all right, and there is the yarn in the cake if you are interested. And I have those 
um, that sock on US 1 2.25 millimeter. That's what I do all of my socks on. And those are Knitters Pride Zings because I'm just obsessed and that's the only, I've just been wanting to use DPNs for socks lately. And those are my jam right now. I just love the Knitters Pride Zings. Okay, so next work in progress. I'll show you Lily's poncho. So this pattern is the Temptation Poncho, which I ordered the kit from Mary Maxim. I talked about this last episode, but the pattern is available to purchase on Ravelry. So I'll make sure to link it down below. So I have this in a bag that was a gift from Robin of Stitch and Pink, which I'm just totally obsessed with this bag and the size of it. And I'll show you a picture of what the poncho looks like done maybe i know i have a picture of it ha. there's the poncho and i'm doing the four to five year size lily is getting ready to turn three and my sister requested i go ahead and go the next size up so that she can get you know a couple of years wear out of it so i finished last episode i was just on the first side of it um because you do you work the front piece the back piece and then you work sleeves so i finished the front piece it's gonna be kind of difficult to hold and stretch out so i'm gonna try my best there that's the front piece and the front piece um the difference between the front and the back is that the front has these bobbles the back does not so the front's done in on holders waiting for me to finish the back piece and the sleeves. I think I have to do that before I start joining anything. And I've started the back piece. I'm just not very far on it yet. I've a lot of my time um, knitting wise has been going towards designing here recently, trying to get the Rhinebeck designs um, ready to go out. So this kind of fell on the back burner like the past week and a half probably. So that's all I've gotten done of the second piece. I'm ready to start some of the short row shaping. So that's something I really need to sit down and focus on. So I think I'll pick this up once the boys start school and then I'll have a little bit more time and brain space to really just sit down and crank it out and get it done into her by her birthday. The, oh, and the needles I'm using, guys, that is the one thing I always forget to talk about is the needles I'm using. So I'm using Knitter's Pride Zings, shocker. <laughs> And the size needle is US 8, five millimeter. And then the yarn, I'm just using the yarn that came with the kit, which is Mary Maxim Woodlands. And it is an acrylic, 90% premium acrylic and 10% alpaca. Super soft, love the color. The colorway name is Stardust. I love that gray. So that's where I'm at. So that's work in progress number two. The third one I will show you is new since the last episode. So like I really needed to be casting anything else on. Oh, but I just had to. So first let's talk about the bag because this bag, you guys, look at it got the waxed canvas on the bottom, gorgeous fabric on the top. This is from Tanny Casey. Has a pocket on the inside, has little grommets in there, her tag. This bag is so well made. I absolutely love it and I love the waxed canvas. I actually took this when we went to the um, Diamondbacks baseball game, I used this as a purse that day. I took this project out of it and put my Desert Vista Dye Works July socks in there, my wallet, all of that stuff. And this was my purse because I wasn't that worried. You know, the wax canvas, you don't have to worry about setting it down in a baseball stadium. So it's a very well made bag. Little backstory to why I started this project. So a couple of weeks ago, I went with my friend Monica on kind of a small little yarn crawl around the area to two different yarn shops. It was only two, so like a mini yarn crawl. 
we went to Jessica Knits in Scottsdale, Arizona, and then we went down to Tempe to Tempe Yarn. And we walked in to Tempe Yarn. I think I'm saying that right, aren't I? There's some things around here that I don't pronounce correctly and Eric's always correcting me. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. But anyways, we walked in there and both saw this shawl and now we're both knitting it. Like we didn't even look around the store or anything else. We walked in and saw the shawl and it was like tunnel vision to the shawl. We had to start it. So we got the stuff to get it started. We've both cast it on. We're kind of doing our own little mini knit along here. So the pattern, I have a picture, but it's in black and white. So it's not the best to sh for showing it off, but it is Vermilion Cliffs. And it is a beaded shawl. You can do it in either fingering weight or lace weight. I am doing the lace weight version of it. And I got my yarn and beads while I was there. Take it out here. Here's the yarn that I'm using. Look how gorgeous that is. I love this color. I, I want a sweater in this color, a cardigan in this color. So this yarn is Dylicious Yarn. And I think it's dyed like, I don't know if they dye it in house there, but it says Tempe yarn. So assuming it's their house yarn and the base is Superwash BFL in silk. So it feels amazing. And there's approximately 875 yards. I'm loving this collar. So I'm not very far at all on the shawl because I'm just not. I, I need to sit down, like do a little bit every day or something. Monica's definitely beating me. If you're watching Monica, I, I didn't have as much as I thought I did <laughs> done. So you're beating me. I've only done one, two, three, four bead rows. But here's what I have so far. And it's gonna be kind of hard to see the beads. Yeah, but can kind of see them there and I love this edging over here that's gonna go along the side of the shawl and this is my very first beaded project ever never done a beaded crochet or beaded knitting this is the first one and I'm loving it so I have a progress keeper from Amber of Makers Haven right there and the needles I'm using are actually high Ohio sharps that's what I had available in the size I needed. And it is a US 3, 3.25 millimeter high high sharps. So like I said, I'm not too far on it because I haven't worked on it in probably at least a week and a half. These are the beads that I picked up there and I'll hold them next to this so you can kind of see them a little bit better. I just loved the contrast of these together. So that's another work in progress. I'm really excited about it. I just, once I get these designs released, I'll have a little bit more knitting time. <laughs> the crochet hook that I'm using is a one millimeter, super tiny, super tiny crochet hook. And I'm having a lot of fun beading. It's something I've always wanted to try I just have never kind of taken the plunge to do it. But as soon as I saw that shawl, I knew I needed to do it and I'm loving it. I think it's going to be gorgeous. So last work in progress that we will talk about today is in my fat squirrel library card bag. And this is my memories card. Again. I have gotten a good bit done on this. I feel like I have anyways. This is what I've been taking to work on at Knit Group. I've worked on it a little bit at home, but I've been taking it on Tuesdays and working on it at Knit Group. So that's, let me know that I'm gonna have that time to do it. So here it is. Like I said, I've split for the sleeves. The yarn that I'm using is Miss Babs Yowza in the Nori colorway. And I'm doing it on Knitter's Pride Zing's 
And these stoppers, because um, I always get asked about these, they are so fun. They are from Coco Knits, and I will make sure to link that shop down below. And I'm using US 7 4.5 millimeter knitter's pride zings. Let's see if I can try it on. Let's see how it's gonna look just a little bit. Oh, I think that's gonna be perfect. This is actually the first time I've tried it on since I split for the sleeves. Hopefully the sleeves aren't gonna be like ginormous. They kind of feel like they are. <laughs> Maybe they won't be. No, I don't think they will be. I want this to be a little bit more of an oversized cardigan, hopefully. I think it will be. It's bunched up on the needles a little bit, so. And then I've still got the, um, what do you call this that goes all the way down? Can't think of the word, but it'll go around the neck and then come down the front. Whatever that thing is, I've got that to add to, so that'll add some width. But I'm really excited about this now that I've tried it on. This kind of makes me want to knit on it, like, right now. But okay, that's another work in progress. Um, just a basic cardigan, which I think is something I will get a lot of use out of. And hopefully this will be Rhinebeck sweater number two. That's the hope. All right, I'm actually gonna leave this out and maybe I'll knit on it a little bit during chatter. Probably not, but maybe. Now we have some mail to talk about. Quite a few things um, have come in lately. First up to show you guys, I have a package. I'm sure everybody heard about the Tits Out Collective that there were so many yarn dyers um, participating in. And I chose to order from Honey Bee Knits. So I love Melissa. If you don't follow Melissa, I love following her. I love watching all of her Insta stories. She's very active um, via Insta stories. I love watching her podcast. I think she is just the sweetest. So I ordered her sock blank. I loved the colors she was posting, and then when she was doing sock blanks for it, I was like, yep, gotta have it. I'm not gonna take it out and unwind it. Maybe I will, no, I won't. But look at all those. That's gonna be so much fun. I cannot wait to knit this up. I love it. So there is her label. And this is a 75% 20, 25% oh no this is sparkle <laughs> read Kayla read 75% 20% superwash merino nylon and then 5% Stellina yeah get that out I love these colors I love the purple and the pink it's got a cute little progress keeper on her card so I cannot wait I've been really wanting to knit soft blanks lately so next thing, I'm trying to stay on track here and not get completely confused and forget something. So I received the most amazing and generous package from Laura of Tiny Human Knits. I have seen her stuff on Meg's podcast when she shared it and then on Laura's Instagram as well. And she makes the most amazing items. So she reached out and wanted to send me a package and she sent me this gorgeous notions pouch. Look at that. And the back is the Alice fabric. And she said she sent this so that it would match one of my favorite project bags, which is my Sandy by the Lakeside bag. Um, that was a gift from Sandy. So this is perfect. And I just cannot get over the detail on that. So I'm so excited to start using this. It's going to be something that stays with my Sandy bag so that I can use them together. And I'll go ahead and show you Laura's tag. She is Tiny Human Knits on Etsy. And I believe that her shop has been closed and it is getting ready to open back up August 1st, I believe. Um, so head over and follow her. And once you guys see these next couple of things, you're really gonna wanna head over and follow her. So I have two little boxes here that have the most gorgeous yarn in them. So this one is her Goldilocks colorway and it is on her basic sock which is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It's gonna be a little noisy as I take it out. Look at this. Self-striping and I love when they're in the gobstopper. I, that just makes my heart so happy. You get to see all those colors in that fun ball. 
So this is stunning. This was the first one I opened and I was blown away. Then when I opened this next one, can you guys see that? This colorway name is Crazy Sock Lady. It's again on her basic sock, the 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. Look at that. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take these out because they're so prettily, prettily packaged. <laughs> is that even a word? I don't know. But I'm going to leave it in there. But um, look at that. This is me in a ball right here. How pretty is that? You guys know I love purple. And then I've so been drawn to this shade of like a dusty mauve pink lately. And then I love gray. I love this color. This is me in a ball. She like nailed it. And I was so touched that she named it Crazy Sock Lady. I love it. I wanted to just rip this out of the packaging and cast on right there in the kitchen <laughs> as soon as I opened this box. I am so in love with these colors, but I resisted. But this is going to be my next vanilla sock that I cast on that's not for design or for Desert Vista Dye Works. This is going to be it because I cannot wait. I just have been taking it out of the box and looking at it because it's so pretty. Part of me is like, don't knit it. Like put it up on a shelf and just stare at the ball. But I have to knit it. So you'll be seeing this very, very soon. And we also had quite a few donations come into the podcast, which is so amazing. It makes me so excited. And I hope that you guys are excited too, because this means we're going to have some amazing giveaways coming up very soon. So this one, this next one I'm going to show you will actually be the 50th episode giveaway. Look at that. Have you guys seen these bags? So this is by Nanette. And I think it's Nanette Wake Studio. Her card is actually buried in this box right here. Um, but I'm going to put it right here. And of course, there'll be a link down below. And she hand weaves this fabric and then makes project bags. And this is actually out of Christy of Yarn Cafe Creations, her 11 colorway. How pretty is that? And then she's got this gorgeous zipper pull. And the inside is yarn balls. So fun. And knitting needles. So this is going to be the giveaway prize for episode 50. So make sure you watch the next episode for your chance to win this. I had Shauna of Farm Girl Fibers reach out and ask if she could send a prize for the podcast. And she is brand new. She is just getting her Etsy shop up and going and running. And this colorway is You'll Bring Honor to Us. I think that is, that would make the most gorgeous pair of socks. And I think her label is adorable. Farm Girl Fibers. And this is on her 85%, 15% Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. And she said that this was in reference to her favorite Disney movie, which is Mulan. I thought that was so fun. And then she also has started doing scrappy project bags. So she sent one of those for a giveaway as well. And she told me I could keep, you know, whatever I wanted out of this, but I want to give back to you guys and share the love because I feel like I've been so blessed lately by so many amazing people and I want to give back to you guys as much as I possibly can. So look at this gorgeous bag. And she has farm girl fibers stitched across the bottom here. It's a nice boxed bottom bag. I love it. This one's hard for me to give away, you guys, because I am obsessed with denim. And I'm obsessed with scrappy. This one's tough to give away, but I am gonna put this in the prize cubby and then look at the inside fabric so pretty so these two will be going into the prize bin now I am keeping she made me she beaded a little sock it is so cute 
Look how pretty that is. It's on a progress keeper, so I'm keeping this little cute little sock. And I also received two sock blanks from Amber of Amber's Yarn Shop. Look at those. These are double knit sock blanks. I have used sock blanks, but I've never used a double knit one. So I'm really excited about this. Um, so she sent one for me and one for a giveaway. This one's going to be going into the prize bin and this is the one that I'm going to be knitting up. So I'm really excited to give a double blank sock blank, a double blank, a double knit sock blank a try. <laughs> I love these colors. And then this one, what I love about it is these like pops of blue that are throughout. So much fun. So this will be an upcoming prize. Allison of Lofty Loops reached out and asked if she could, could send some goodies my way. So she is Lofty Loops Yarn and it is loftyloopsyarn.com. And she does also have the Lofty Loops podcast on YouTube. So she sent so many goodies my way. She said, use some for the podcast, keep some for yourself. So I think what I decided while I was getting everything ready for the podcast, these two are going to be going to the prize bin. So this is on her Lofty Sock, which is an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, 400 yards, 100 grams, in the Red Pill Blues. Look how pretty that is. And then this one is a 50 gram, and it is on the same Lofty Sock in her Blue Heart Lily colorway. I love that. And the two that I've decided to keep to play with, maybe for some designs or maybe just to play with, I don't know, we will see. But this is on her Lofty Glitz colorway. And the colorway is Lotus. And this one is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 5% Stellina, 219 yards, 50 grams. And like I said, the Lotus colorway. This one might have to be socks for my niece Lily for her birthday. Just a cute little pair of socks for her. I think that would be cute. So that's that one. And then this is Sally and this is on her lofty sock, the 80-20 blend. I think it's so pretty. I think this one might be a sock design. I have something in my brain for this one. We'll see. Oh, before I forget, Allison was so generous and also gave us a coupon code to use in her shop. So if you head over, you can use the coupon code CRAZYSOCKS15. Last thing I have to show you that I've received in the mail in the last three weeks was something that I was lucky enough to be able to snag from Amy of Dandelion and Dogwood, also known as Little Tayloress. And I was stalking her updates, just waiting for it to go live so that I could get my hands on this. So this is her Married in Jeans colorway, which I think is so fun. It's an 80-20 blend superwash merino nylon, fingering weight high twist. It is a 120 gram kit. So you've got your 100 gram full skein and then your 20 gram mini. I love, there's her gorgeous label. I love these together. And then Amy also put in another mini that I think as soon as I pulled these out, I thought shawl. So I think these are going to have to be a shawl design. I already kind of know what I'm going to do. I think I love it. And I love the married in jeans reference because Eric and I did not have a big wedding. We went to the courthouse. So this is perfect. For our wedding <laughs> what our wedding was um married in jeans yeah perfect love it so possibly a shawl design coming up with these i think and that is it for mail like i said there was a lot it's been three weeks and i am so blown away by the generosity of everyone recently prizes for the podcast you guys blow me away all the time um, with how generous and amazing this community is. And I'm so excited about giveaways and prizes coming up. 
I love doing those. I think it's so much fun to be able to give stuff away to you guys. But that kind of wraps up all of the knitting and yarn stuff. Just um, flipping my notes over here. And now we just have a little bit of chatter and really not too much. And I actually think I will pull up my sweater here and try this whole um, knitting while I talk thing. And hopefully there's not gonna be too much because I think we're already in an hour. So recently, it's been three weeks since the last episode, like I said, life has just been crazy lately, I feel like. Obviously, I mean, we just moved across the country, so that's a little crazy in and of itself. And then Eric was gone for two weeks. He had two work trips that just happened to be back to back. And that was just a little insane. It just worked out a weird way that they ended up being one right after another. So he was not even home for 48 hours before he had to head out on his next work trip, which was a little insane, I will say. Um, while he was gone on his second trip, the van started acting funny and turns out it was just the battery. But that was a little bit stressful because I just thought, please don't let it be something big. And of course it happened while the kids and I were out. We were at the post office and I had thought for a couple of days, it sounded like it was turning over. Like when I would go to turn it on, it just it sounded a little funny. And then we were at the post office and we go to get in the car and I go to turn it on and it's just like, rah, rah, rah. I thought, no, like here I am, you know, out here, Eric's out of town. I don't have any family around. Um, you know, I don't really know that many people around here. And I thought, please don't let my car break down, like at the post office. But we got home, we got home. Oh, and as soon as I turned it on, the, I think when I looked it up in the book, it was like something malfunction or something. Light was on. Um, yeah, it ended up just being the battery. Thank the Lord, when he got home, he checked it and said, I think it's just the battery, let's replace it. And that was it, we're good, knock on wood. Knock on wood, we're good. But I had almost driven to Colorado to visit some family while he was gone that second trip. And then I think it was like the day after I was gonna leave that the battery had the issue. And I thought, oh my gosh, thank you Lord that we did not drive up to Colorado because I could have been stuck between here and there, which is like a 10 hour drive with a dead battery with the kids and the dogs. <laughs> So everything works out for a reason. But yes, that's taken care of. It was just the battery, we're good. And Eric's home until next month. He goes to Oregon next month um, for another week. So we have just been doing a lot of school prep, getting you know the kids ready to go back to school and school shopping for supplies and clothes. They have Meet the Teacher next, this next Tuesday, and then school starts on Thursday. So they're excited and nervous at the same time. I think Austin's more excited than Wyatt is. He's a very social kid and he has really missed not having friends to hang out with this summer. So he's excited to start school and to meet some kids that live around the area. Um, it's gonna be fun. We're only, we're less than half a mile away from the school. So when the weather cools down, Austin wants to start riding his bike or scooter or something. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Wyatt has no interest in any of that. He wants me to take him every day, which is perfectly fine. We're less than half a mile, not a big deal. And there actually is not a school bus that goes right by the house. We're so close. That's mainly been what our life has been lately, just getting ready to go back to school. But I think we're good and they're ready. You know, we have everything bought for all of their back to school stuff. They're just anxious to get to go meet their teachers next week and make some friends. I'm so, I'm excited for them, but as a mom, I'm also nervous for them. I'm sure a lot of parents can relate to that. Um, I don't know, I kind of feel their nervousness as well. And just, it's, it's nerve wracking. Meeting, going in as the new kid, you know, and meeting, meeting new people and trying to make new friends. So I'm excited and nervous for them as well. But there are gonna be a lot of new kids when we went to register um, both of them. When we went to register them, I can't remember how many other new sixth graders they had had register as new students. 
so there is going to be quite a few. Austin will be the only new kid, so in some ways I think that made him feel a little bit better, knowing he won't be the only new person. And I have been trying to do more reading. I try to make a, you know, I've made a habit of reading every night before bed. And I ask for some book recommendations on Instagram via Insta Stories, and I got a ton of recommendations. So I had just finished not that long ago, Woman in the Window, and I loved it. Those type of books are my favorite where there's, they're kind of like a psychological thriller. There's some suspense. I love books about like serial killers or mysteries. Um, I'm just intrigued by all of that and I love it. That's the kind of book that I really can get into and enjoy. And I just finished Woman in the Window and I had checked out another book. Um, my grandmother or my grandma asked me to tell you she's sorry. I cannot remember the full name because that's kind of a mouthful of a name. Um, I had checked that out and I was maybe a fourth of the way in and I probably just didn't give it enough time, but I could not get into it. And when I read before bed, if I'm not into the book, I will fall asleep. Because as soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm out like a light. Um, so I have to really be into and enjoying the book to be able to stay awake to read it. Um, so I just was not, I could not get into that one. So I took it, I was ready to take it back and I asked for some recommendations and I got so many recommendations and I'm so excited about it because I started a list. Um, I've been going to the library and getting books um, quite a bit, or I say quite a bit, we just moved here. So I went twice, third time yesterday, I checked out my third book, but I'm enjoying being able to do that. And so I went on the library website into my account and made like a to read list. And I put all of the recommendations in there so I can go through and see what's available or, you know, put a request out for something to hold. And um, I was really excited. So thank you to everybody that put some recommendations out there. And I had some people ask if I will share the list that was recommended, you know, everything that was recommended. Of course I will. I'm so happy to do that. So what I'm planning to do, possibly today, I don't know that it'll get done by the time this episode goes up, but the plan is, and I will of course announce on Instagram when it is up and out there, I will put the list in Ravelry. I think that's what I'm gonna do with it. Open up Thread and Ravelry with the list, and then what we can do is people can go through and recommend some other books as well, and we can kind of use that thread as kind of like some book recommendations. They don't have to be psychological thrillers. There were a couple that were recommended that were not, um, which I did add to my list as well. One was a knitting book that I'm excited to read. Um, so yes, I think that'll be fun, a kind of different thread to have open in the Ravelry group because I know quite a few knitters, you know, we are, we enjoy reading as well. I don't read as much as I used to because knitting took over, but that is what it is. <laughs> That's why I try to make a habit of reading every night before bed. So yes, right now I'm reading Emma in the Night. It's actually over there on the nightstand. I should go get it, but I'm not going to. I'll just put the name right here. Emma in the Night is the name of it. And I finished the second chapter last night before I went to bed. And I'm hooked so far. So I don't think it's going to be one that I have a problem reading. And I think that wraps it up for today. This was definitely a long episode. I'm sorry, it was three weeks, guys. It just happened. Life was just crazy. I was not, I kind of wasn't in the brain space to record last week when I was scheduled to. I just, there had been so much going on. And with Eric being gone for two weeks, I was feeling a little bit stressed and frazzled. So I just took that day and I knit all day, the day that I was gonna record. And it was much needed. Definitely knitting recharges me in a way and kind of helps calm me. And I know that it's like that for so many people. But yes, I think that will wrap it up today. I'm gonna to finish this row on my memories cardigan and then start editing this for you guys so that hopefully it will go up today, we shall see. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode and I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching, especially when they're a little bit longer of an episode like today. And I will see you guys again, hopefully in two weeks. Lately, I've been kind of debating doing weekly, even if it's just one episode, you know, is a little bit shorter and the next week is a little bit longer, just to kind of balance out and not have so much to talk about at once. But 
we'll see once we get into a routine with the boys in school how how my time plays out we'll see how it works but thank you guys for tuning in if you've stuck it out till the end much appreciated but i will see you guys again in a couple of weeks so until then happy knitting bye